first three lessons were about setting up Blender. The uh, lessons four through eight were about editing techniques. And now we're going to install some add-ons that will make editing easier. So I've uh, just gone to Google and I'm going to type Blender add-on. And the first add-on I'm installing is called Jump to Cut. And Yes, I do know that it's guessing it up there, but I wanted to type it out to make it clearer. First, top of the list, this one, jump to cut. Not the most graphically exciting page. After all, it is just a simple plugin that will add this to our interface. And what do we do? We uh, go to the current version, download. Ah, uh, we don't do that. That presents us with a page of code, which, so let's go back and we'll right click it all and go save link as and we've got a folder ready documents blender file add-ons save it doesn't matter where you put it because once we load up blender we're going to actually install it into the blender application itself so now we're in blender what do we do we actually have to install the add-on and to do that we go to file user preferences Add-ons, install from file. Ah, it's gone to the right folder already. Uh, if not, I think you're probably familiar with this file browser right now. Uh, it's worth noting that as we may be well be going to this folder quite a few times, if I go to Blender Files, Add-ons, I'm going to add a bookmark for it. So we now have a bookmark here called add-ons. You see, I just went to the folder I wanted and then clicked the plus icon under bookmarks. There's also a rather handy recent folders option here. And it goes to all the uh, folders I've recently been in in, in Blender here. So, um, yeah, that is also quite useful. But what are we doing? We're installing this, aren't we? I'm going to click sequencer jump to cut. And then install from file. And you click the uh, tick box on the right here, and then click Save User Settings. However, it might be that the, you don't get the uh, Jump to Cut pop-up immediately. It might be that you have to do this instead. Oh, well here we're actually looking at a huge number. There's a huge number of add-ons that when you load up Blender are are installed in it but not actually activated. A few of them are activated, like this one that allows us to import and export the 3DS format. You notice ticked. Well now what we want to do now we've installed Jump to Cut is to actually activate it. And to do that I'm just going to type into this search bar. Oh, I only need to type J-U-M. And uh, Sequencer Jump to Cut comes up here, but it's greyed out because it's not actually activated. So we just want to tick this box. And so that we don't have to do this every time we load up Blender, let's now go to Save User Settings. And shut this window. And if I open this tab here, which has mysteriously shut, we now see our Jump to Cut buttons. So what do they do? Well, to explore what they do, shall we start off by opening the um, file that we were editing previously, and then we can have a good look at what it does. Right, and we uh, let's go back to the default view. Um, okay, and now if we scroll down to the bottom of this, we find this jump to cut box that we were promised. I'm just going to bigify that a bit. Okay, so what we've got here... Jump, cut previous, and cut next. The most useful and most obvious two buttons in this box. So, cut previous will go to the previous point at which a uh, video, audio, or other kind of strip starts or ends. And cut next is the same, exactly the same, but it goes to the next one. Right. The next one are marker previous and marker next, which do the same thing, except I haven't actually shown you what markers are, have I? Right, so, right, let's create a marker at this frame. Let's create a marker at frame 600. We're going to create a marker, add marker, and by default it's called F underscore and then the number of the frame we're on. But we could rename the marker if we wanted to. Uh, marker 1. 
and we can add as many markers as we like. Um, uh, yeah, marker, add marker, or the M key if you want to do it as a shortcut. Uh, markers can be very useful for just labelling stuff as you go along. They don't have any effect on the actual video file you're creating. They're just um, a thing that shows you, uh, it's just so you can label various things on your timeline and put little labels on everything as you're going along to make it easier for yourself to read or for somebody else you're working with to read. So it's kind of like if you ever done coding it's like putting comments in. But also it does include these buttons marker previous, jump to the previous marker, jump marker next, jump to the next marker. And the next ones are source in and source out. Now, what they do is, well, source in actually creates a marker called in, and wherever the uh, playhead is at, and marker out creates one called out. So, well, okay, but why? Why have we got why have we got these things called uh, marker in and marker out? The next one, mark in and out of active strip. If we select a strip, um. And we click this button. Right, it's now moved the in and out points to the beginning and end of this strip. Oh, another thing that's worth noting that you can do with markers, if I right click a marker, now that marker is selected, it's gone white, the text has moved up a bit and it's glowing orange, I can use the G key, remember how G for grab allows you to move strips? Well, you can move markers in the exact same way. So I can move these in and out markers to here and here. Um, and the next thing we've got to do, trim to in and out. Right, so if I've got a strip selected, I can click trim to in and out, and you see it's cut this strip at the in and out marker. Even though I said markers don't have any effect on the actual thing, uh, one of the things that this little script that somebody's written does is it creates markers called in and out and then it allows you to do stuff based on where these markers known as in and out are. Right, you also notice that this, the, that was that uh, crossfade effect. Remember how we had a crossfade between the two videos? Well unfortunately now that these two strips are no longer overlapping, the crossfade isn't really working. So if I go through here, it's actually, I'm not quite sure what is going on here. It seems to still be a cross, oh, is it a crossfade on still images? No, because that one seems to still be, I'm not really sure what that's doing. It's gone bright pink rather than a kind of mid pink that it was before because it's showing that it's not really overlapping. I'm just gonna use the old, oh, con Control Alt Z undo. Um, actually, ooh, activate select. We'll try that one. Yes. So I'm just going to do that, and we'll. You see, that's a more sort of dull pink, which means it's actually working, and it's a bright pink, which means you've broken it by moving strips around or cutting them in this case. Uh, right. What else have we got? Now this is a button that is pretty useful. Remember how we've been typing in the end frame all this time, reading the end frame and typing it in? Well, we could actually go use set start and end, and it automatically sets the end frame to where the out marker is, and the in fra the, the start frame to where the in marker is. So now, you know, it's just going from frame 484 to 1393, and that's going like this. Yeah. So with that, you could you could also you could very quickly if I if I wanted to render just this end section here with the logo expanding on. So I wanted to do just a little preview render of that to make sure that was working because I because there's a lot of stuff going on here. There's quite a lot of overlay clips. It doesn't play very smoothly though on this computer. None of it plays very smoothly. Right. So if I wanted to do that, I could use uh, mark in and out to active strip followed by set start and end and then I'll be able to render just this section here. And you remember when you render a video with Blender, oh a bit of a tongue twister there, remember when you render a video through Blender it comes out, the, na the file name comes out with um, certain numbers at the end of it. Remember the last one ended with, oh, what are we looking at, oh yeah render 0001 to one seven seven five. 
That means if you render this without changing your file name for the output of the render, then it won't overwrite the previous render. It will create a new one because the numbers at the end of the file name are different. So that can be quite useful for creating little previews as you go along. That's uh, pretty useful. I must admit, uh, these are the two last buttons. I'm just going to leave these for now. Uh, maybe you could just try to figure out what they do on their own. What they do is not only strangely complicated to explain, but I've also not really got any idea what you'd be using it for. Uh, so I'm just going to leave those for now. I've never really used them myself. I only like came to experiment with what they were doing as I was making this tutorial, and then I decided, you know what? Can't be asked. Okay, and the next one we're going to remember how uh, fiddly it was typing in values to make this logo expand and move it around the screen and scale it and rotate it. Well, the next plugin we've got will make that much easier. Okay, see you soon. Bye.